Welcome back to our series on the TD Ameritrade WebSocket API. So, uh, last video, what did we cover? Well, we basically got everything set up so that way we can officially log in to our particular streaming capability. So a lot of that was using the user principles endpoint to make a request. We got a bunch of information sent back to us. Some of it we had to parse. So the token timestamp, for example, we had to convert to milliseconds, which by default, it doesn't come back in. And then we also had to define our credentials. The credentials is what we're passing through in our login request. So basically it contains things like your app ID, your token, your user ID, all sorts of fun stuff. So in this video, we're gonna define our login request. We're gonna define our data request, and we'll go through it a little bit and explain kind of what this is and what that is. We're gonna encode our data so that way we can successfully get it into our streaming capability. And then I'll probably cut it off at that point just because the video after that is where we're gonna basically build our WebSocket client. So let's get started. All righty, I'm gonna jump back to documentation a little bit. And I'm gonna go up here to the top. All right, so when you go to the streaming data API, they do give you a nice little example. And they tell you like, okay, so you gotta make your user principal request and then you get your information back and you have to parse it and then you prepare your dictionary for your second request, which you're gonna be doing the login. And then you get down to this point. And then this is the important, important part. This is your request that you can do. So this is the request where you're basically go and log in. It does require a couple pieces of information. So your account, your source, which is like your app ID. Um, it does require the credentials and we do have to parse them a little bit. And that's pretty much the big stuff. If you wanna see and just understand a little bit more about how that works, if you're still kind of confused, you're like, eh, I don't know about that. Just go down to login request and it will tell you basically what are the parameters that you need to pass through. So for example, we have to define a service. This will be an admin service and we have to provide a command, which is logging in. Once we log in, there are some additional parameters that we have to pass through. Things like account, things like source, things like token, the version, and then the credentials. So that big dictionary we made in the last video, that's what we're gonna be passing through with an extra step. And then there's some optional ones. So how fast do you want this data coming back to you? You can make it really fast, like express, or you can say, hey, I don't really care. It doesn't need to come back like super fast. Um, you know, maybe like the news headlines, like is news gonna be changing really that constantly? Um, you can set that <clears throat> if you want. And then they give you a nice little example one. So it's very useful, very cool. Um, you'll see this part. This is probably where I got stuck the most because it just was not working. And then they tell you what you should expect back when you make your request. And so zero is success, three is login denied, and then you get a message if any. So what I'm gonna do just to kind of make things go a little bit faster, nothing crazy, I'm gonna take this right here. Now, technically, I'll explain in a little bit. I haven't experimented a ton yet with it, but we might not need to define two separate requests in the sense of two variables that has one request and then a second variable which has two other requests. And I'll explain that more when we get there. But really, all I wanna do here is I just wanna get things set up so that way um, I can make my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna tab that in and I'm OCD. So I'm gonna make sure everything's kind of nice and aligned. So that way it's a little bit easier to read too because the last thing you wanna do is look at this and go like, what am I looking at? Because I can't read any of that. And so what I'll do here is I'll just indent that a little bit and then I will set that. And then I'm gonna take that and just clean it up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. Alrighty. Okay, <clears throat> so we do need some information. So I need my account ID. Well, lucky for us, we already got that up here. I do need my app ID. And keep in mind, I am copying over this because this is technically in JavaScript. And so that's a problem for us if we're in Python. Okay, so we got our account ID, we got our app ID. It's a little confusing. The source is technically your app ID. Um, and then we need our token. And then we'll go on to the fun part, <laughs> the credentials. And you might be like me, 
Why are you asking for the same information twice? Well, it's because they like making it confusing. Okay, so we do have to URL encode our credentials uh, dictionary. So that is why in the first video I imported the URL lib. And so all you need to do is you just need to do URL lib, you're gonna do parse, and you're gonna do URL encode. And then all you gotta do is you gotta just pass through that credentials API, or sorry, dictionary. And then once you've done that, that's all you really need in order to make your login request. So on our second request is the actual data that we wanna stream. Now in this one, I'm doing I think like the most active stocks, and then somebody was asking about futures a couple days ago, so I said, you know, I'll do futures, that's the first one. So I already have them kind of set up, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy them just to save some time. So here I'm defining my login request and then the second one. So here I'm defining the actual data that I wanna stream. Now what you'll notice is I have this kind of massive list of requests because you can request multiple streams at once. You could do futures, you could do Forex, you can do active, account activity, all sorts of different stuff. You can get information streamed to you. What you've got to make sure, though, is that your information is, uh, I would say, ordered correctly. So, for example, up here, I'm going to technically change that to a string, but you want to make sure that your login request is first, because if you're not logged in, you can't stream. I'm not 100% sure it totally matters, but I, I was playing around with it, and if I had this set to 1 and then this set to 0, all sorts of problems would happen. So at least from what I've experienced, I have to set my login request to zero before I can actually do any second request, which makes sense because you should be logged in before you start streaming data. But I'm not 100% positive, and they, of course they didn't really clear that up in the, in the documentation. So if anyone else has a different experience and you say, hey, I set it to five and I had no problems, feel free to share that down in the comments because again, I'm not 100% sure. With this one, all I do is I define a service, so active NASDAQ. In this one, I was doing level one futures. I define the request ID, so the order in which I want to do the request. This can be one, this can be two. <clears throat> um, sub, so if I want to subscribe to it. And then the information, so things like my account, my app ID. And then for each one of these services, you'll see parameters, the keys and the fields. So for example, if I go to Active's NASDAQ, it's down a little bit, yes. Okay, so this is the request, this is the service, so you can do NASDAQ, you can do NYSC, options over the counter, so the different types of exchanges. The command is you subscribe to the data, and then you have parameters, there's keys and fields. So the keys is like, hey, I want, in this example, I wanted the NASDAQ 60, so maybe the 60 most active stocks. And then it the fields that I want back. Looks like there's just one, it's active data. Uh, so I just took the example they have here. Um, and then it's like uh, description all, active fields, group zero, group one. So there's a lot of different kind of things you can you can change about it. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure how each one of these always works, so you might have to play around with a little bit. And as I get more familiar with it, I will be doing videos. But at this point, let's just at least make some requests. But basically, they break everything down into the components that you need. And then you can specify the fields that you want sent back to us and everything along that. So little bit of reading but for the most part it is kind of self-explanatory but it is still confusing and then I also did level one futures so I'm gonna go back up to the top just so I went off to scroll and possibly go buy it uh, level one futures so with this one again you define the service you define the command you do define the keys and then <clears throat> uh, fields so for example like you can do an active symbol so I just took the example they had and then you can ask for the fields back. So one is a symbol, one is a bid price, ask price, all sorts of good stuff. I mean, ton of data here, ton of data that you can possibly get back. So play around with it. And if you got something to share, share away. In this one, I just get fields zero through four, which is 
symbol, bid price, ask price, last price, bid size. So basic stuff. So that's really how it is. Um, you have your master request and you have a list of the requests that you wanna make. So this is my first request. My second request is separated by a comma and that's my second request. So now that I've defined my request, I have to encode my request into a JSON string. So turn the request <clears throat> into a JSON string. So I'm gonna take my login and I'm gonna just call it login encoded. I'm gonna call my JSON library. I'm gonna call the dumps command. It is dumps for string. So S at the end means string. If there's no S at the end, it's usually a file. Login request <clears throat> and then data encoded, which would be JSON dumps and then it would be data request. And I wanna make sure everything is good, okay. And so if I do like this, data encoded, Oh, I misspelled something. See, this is why you run it before you do stuff like that. Because if you were like me, you would have gotten all the way down. What happened? Ooh. Oh, well, that's fun. You're gonna have to give me a second. Um, I'm gonna have to get a new access token. Thing about the wonderful access tokens is they do expire pretty quick, which is always a fun thing. So um, let's just give it a second. <clears throat> and once it gets the new access token, then we'll be good. But there's all sorts of problems where if the access token expires, you gotta run it again, all sorts of fun stuff. And so again, just make sure everything works. Okay. <clears throat> what is going on? <clears throat> One second. Count CD domain. Oh, good Lord. Okay, I think that's good. <laughs> okay, perfect, sorry. I should have double checked before I went on the next one. Of course, I screwed it all up. Um, but I just made that to ID and then looks like I was missing a colon there and then I had S at the end. So. This is how it's gonna look. So it's just a JSON string. It looks literally identical to what we have up here. There's just these little tiny brackets in the front. And then if it has to change anything else, it changes it. But basically from here, we have all the information we need to move to the next component, which we will cover in the next video. So if you have any questions, again, at this point, just defining your request, defining your credentials, anything along that nature, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. In the next video, we're gonna build our WebSocket client. So this is gonna be the mechanism that we're gonna be using in order to make and receive requests. It's a lot of different stuff in it, I'm gonna be honest. So if you're new to it, don't worry, take some time, really try to understand kind of what's going on. But uh, it, it's very important that you understand that part of the video because otherwise, you're never gonna make it to the final part. So thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you in video number four.